for stopping by the channel. Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing an awesome system. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing an awesome system that was produced in Japan only by uh, Bandai before their merger with Namco. The system originally came out in 1999 to compete with the Neo Geo Pocket, and it was produced until 2003, I think. The cool thing about this system is that it was developed by Gunpei Yoki, who's the same guy that developed the original Game Boy. And it's kind of neat that he went off and started his own company after the whole Virtual Boy and everything, and it's very unfortunate that he passed away. Uh, likely in English on the front, but if you look here on the back, a lot of it's in Japanese. Uh, we'll open it up and we'll take a look at what's inside. here's the system and then there's a set of instructions that came with it sadly enough though the instructions are in Japanese so I can't read any of them to you but the manual just goes through I'm sure the basics shows you the different sides and everything all the different buttons and let's take a look at the system itself it also comes with a registration card this system is really light it's very small, it's very thin. Uh, the cool thing about this system is it runs off a single AA battery, and it actually gets about 15 to 20 hours battery life off that one battery, which is just amazing at the time. Even the Game Boy Color and everything couldn't compete with this. Uh, to go with the size here, it's real thin. I have a Super Nintendo game because they're kind of likewise in size on how big it is. But if you look, it's a little bit thinner. It's very light. And it's a, just a really nice system. Uh, the first version of this system was in black and white only. And this system here is the Bandai Wonderswan Color. And the color games are completely compatible with the original black and white games. However, the black and white doesn't play all the color games. This system was followed by the Swan Crystal, I think it's called, which has a better screen. They say that there's less ghosting, but I haven't experienced a lot of ghosting myself. It retailed for about $59 when it came out as well, so it was definitely a good deal when it comes to that. I believe it was aimed and more marketed for people in their 20s, so you could play it when you're on the bus and waiting to go different places like that. Um, the battery has a couple different locks on it. There's a slider switch and then a release to pull it out. And that, some might say that's ridiculous, but I really think that was so the system because it needs the battery for the contacts and so I think it's just so that way you don't lose the battery door because if you look the battery itself is inside the battery door. On the front here you have a power button, a start button, and a sound button. The sound button works where you, it starts out and it goes high, lower, lowest, and then it goes back up to high again. There's an A and B button on the right side and then on the left side there's the Y buttons and the X buttons and there's four of each one. They're named X1, X2, X3, X4, and then the same with the Ys. And the neat thing about this system is a lot of games like the shoot 'em ups allowed you to turn the system vertically, and you could play it like that, much like the Atari Lynx lets you do. Um, on the side, there's a port here for a link cable, and I think it was originally going to link up with the PlayStation to where you could download games for it. I don't know what eventually came of that, it also went with a Wondergate system, which I believe allowed you to also download more games. This game console has a pretty, fa a fairly large library, especially if you combine the black and white and the color games. And the game cartridges themselves are pretty comparable to like the Game Boy Advance. They have a ton of contacts here. They have a kind of transparent look to them. Uh, this one here is a black and white game, and the color games, all the ones I have, are, at least, are in these kind of clear shells, so you can tell the difference between them. They come with these nifty dust covers. The boxes for the games are pretty small. Uh, here's a color box, and then here's the Wonder Swan original box. They're pretty small in size. Uh, most of them are in Japanese. If you take a look, what's pretty cool on this one is it shows the PlayStation Pocket thing, and that's pretty neat. I, I apologize, I don't remember the name of it right now. And this game allows for link cables. Uh, if you have the adapter, you can use the headphones. 
a lot of the games were first party, but honestly they had a ton of third party support, especially from Final Fantasy, they offered Final Fantasy bundles, um, there was a lot of Square support, Capcom, there's a few Sammy games. So they had a lot of really good people helping them make good titles for the systems. The sad thing about it is though, a lot of the titles were available on other systems that were easier to find and over here in America they're in English. Most of the games are fully in Japanese and they're very hard to play if you don't know any Japanese so it's pretty difficult. Some of them do have FAQs, some of them do have guides, but since the system wasn't too huge over here, it hasn't been translated a whole lot. Hey guys, I'm going to show you a quick little demo so you can see the system in action here. Uh, when you press the start and power buttons, it lets you enter in some personal information about yourself, like your name, your birthday, your sex, and it also has you put in your blood type. Now, blood types aren't as big here in America, but in Japan they're kind of thought of as horoscopes. The only place where I see any of this really applies to your system is when it powers on. And if you take a look, it says Colette there. It's kind of a little bit blurry. I'm having a hard time getting the screen to capture because it's really weird light outside today. Uh, the game inside right now is a Gundam game. It's an RPG. There's quite a few of them for the system. And it is a color game. The color's not picking up super well. Um, my only complaint really about this system is how small the buttons are. It makes it a little bit harder to hit them. I don't have too much of a hard time, but I can see how if you had larger fingers it would give you trouble. Uh, especially like I have the DJ turntable game, and it would be hard to be hitting a bunch of buttons at the same time. And I'll hit start here. And it's just a basic old school 2D RPG. Nothing too fancy about it. And I hope you guys like the review. Uh, look forward to more reviews. I'm going to try and get a better capture of the screen and start reviewing some of the games here in the future. Uh, let us know what you think. And thanks for stopping by at Stuck in the 90s.